Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave, and today I'm going to show you five different ways to paint an evergreen tree. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so today we are going to be painting one of my favorite subjects outside of painting flowers, and that is trees. I love painting trees. More specifically, I love painting evergreen trees. Um, I do have a couple videos on them, but today I'm going to show you five different ways and styles to paint them so you can see which style suits you best. Um, and yeah, so I do have a video that is entitled The Do's and Don'ts of Painting an Evergreen Tree, and that's just me giving you tips on how I typically like to do it, but I will never say don't do it this way actually because really style is all up to your personality and who you are. So if you like a specific style or like or look, just go with that. Okay, so I have my Etcher Lab Cold Press Watercolor Sketchbook. I have my Winsor Newton Professional Paints and I have my Emma LaFave Craft Emo Brushes in a size six and a size two. We'll see which ones we need. I'm just gonna wet up all of my greens. We're just gonna use a variety of greens for this today. Okay, and the first one we're going to do, I, I don't actually have any technical names for each of these trees. I know there are tons of different types of evergreen trees. There's blue spruce, there's pine, there's cedar. I don't know. There's a bunch of different ones. So I don't know exactly what I'm painting, but I'm just going to give you some different styles and ways to paint them. Okay, so the first one we are going to do. So I'm just going to take some sap green to start. And I'm just going to grab also some brown. My burnt umber is looking so sad lately. It's this little piece. I don't know why, but my burnt umber always seems to just fall right out of my palette. So I'm just going to try and stick it back in. I got some water. I'm just pushing it in there. <laughs> Let's hope it sticks. That's how I do it. Okay. Um, this one always falls out. And I'm just going to wet this up. I'm just going to add a little bit of burnt umber to my sap green just to mute it just a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna start off with a small line at the top. And remember just using a light wash, I always start with a light wash with everything and then work in my shadows. And actually, maybe we'll just go, we'll make it a bigger line. Okay, very light. And we're just gonna start doing these uneven kind of branches. They're not even branches. They're just, we're just dabbing our brush. It's on a 45 degree angle and we're just kind of dabbing it. And I'm actually leaving space in between so you can see some of the trunk. Okay. This is going to be kind of like a sparse looking tree and we're just dabbing it like so. This would be like one of those really tall evergreen trees that you'd find kind of like in the mountains or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know. I'm not a tree expert, but I assume this is what it would look like. And we might actually end up doing a bigger, like longer trunk for this and see how I'm just, I'm just dabbing it and I'm leaving some white space. So you can see that trunk. We're actually going to add some brown to that trunk as well. And I'm just like making kind of like these scribbly marks. They're nothing special. Okay, now I'm going to grab some darker green. So I have my perline green here. And I'm just going to, oops, I'm going to tap some of the wet paint into the bottom of some of these areas. Just to give it a little bit of shadow. But I still want to maintain some of those lighter greens on top. Like so. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna take my size two brush. I'm gonna grab some of my burnt umber. And I'm just going to add some brown to the trunks of the tree. So it's gonna bleed into some of the stems and stuff a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna bring it down like so. Okay, and if it bleeds too much, you can always Actually, let's make this a little bit thicker. If it bleeds too much, you can always mop it up just a little bit, but you don't need to. But I just want little bits of brown in there. 
And then you can even do just tiny like little branches if you if you want to add some just with the tip of your brush just like you're seeing just some okay and then I'm even gonna just darken this just a bit might even grab a darker brown just darken the one side of it try not to have too much paint on my brush I'm gonna darken there and then I'm just gonna wash off my brush dry it just a little bit and I'm just gonna actually I should use my size 6 for this just to blend it out a bit better there we go just so it doesn't look like it's floating and there you go there is our first tree and if you feel like you really want to add some deeper shadows in there you can go in with your darker um, green again I'm gonna use my smaller brush so I'm not risking adding too much paint and there, I'm just going to tap in some darker green just to give it a bit more depth. Another round. See that? But we still want to maintain some of those light greens too, right? Cute. Love it. Love it. Okay. So that is our first tree. And now for our second tree, this one's not going to be realistic looking or anything. It's going to be more of like a stylized kind of tree. I'm just going to take whatever green I have in here. Okay, a light wash to start. And I'm going to... Hmm, I'm going to start with a line just really lightly just so I can kind of see where I'm going. And I'm just going to start doing this like little side to side scoop action. So I want you to think of a flattened out U. Okay, I'm just going to kind of scoop it. You can kind of go zigzaggy. And we're trying to flick out at the end so you get these nice, um, really thin edges. So we're just flick side to side. And they're just going to get bigger as we go down the trunk. like a flattened kind of curve just a slight curve and then as we get closer to the bottom you can flatten it out a bit maybe do a little bit of needles coming out the front like that and if you want to let's grab some more like sap green or something I'm just mixing whatever green I have in here and I'm just gonna start just making it a little bit deeper in color that then let's grab some of our darker green can even make it a little bit more muted add a little bit of brown to it and we can just kind of plop it in there might do it more to one side than the other so it looks like there's more of a shadow on the side maybe I don't know just kind of have fun with it top of this a little <laughs> and there we go there's another kind of tree and again you can always deepen those shadows if you really want maybe like closer to the center where there would be a bit more of a shadow make it more a bit intense there would be a bit more of a shadow in the center because of the trunk does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense sometimes. Okay. And there we go. There is our second tree. And if you wanted to do, you know, a little bit of a trunk at the bottom, you could totally do that. Again, washing off my brush, drying it, and I'm just going to slightly just touch it and blend it out a bit. Look at all that green going in there. Whoops. <laughs> I have a lot of water on this tree. That's why. You just mop it up. It's all good. There's just a lot. There's a lot pooling down here, which is fine. See, I make those mistakes too sometimes. But if you ever want to fix it, you can always just take clean water. Kind of scrub over the area you want to lift up. Like that. Okay. 
make sure it's not pooling there anymore. Grab the brown, not too much. Now I'm going to wash off my brush, just dry it slightly. There we go. That's the kind of bleed I wanted. All right. Okay, so there is our second tree. All right, so now our third, we are going to do a little bit like this, but maybe a bit fuller going all the way down to the bottom, okay? Actually, no, we're gonna do more, one of the more detailed ones because I wanna kind of even it out. Don't ask me why, style choices here. Okay, so for this one, I'm actually gonna move on to my size two brush because we're gonna make it a little bit more detailed. I'm gonna start off with a lighter olive green just to start. Okay, and this one, I should have made some room there. Hold on. That's okay. Okay. Now this one, I'm going to start by doing our trunk coming down really lightly. You don't even have to do the full way. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Like that, just a light line. And we're gonna do just some more individual kind of branches, but these ones are gonna be pointing up. So you're gonna start with some kind of pointing up at the top, little kind of spiky branches. And then all of them are gonna be pointing up. Okay, they're all gonna have this kind of scoop to them. And then you're just gonna do these little individual pine needles coming off of these branches. Now that looks pretty sparse, right? So we only have one branch coming this way, one branch coming this way. We want a bit more, so you're gonna have to angle some more kind of coming up. Just to fill it in closer to the trunk, just so it doesn't look so bare. Okay. And we're just gonna gradually make longer branches as we move down. Okay, we're gonna go again here. Maybe one can be coming up the middle. We're just kind of filling in this center here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Now while these branches at the top especially are still wet, you can grab some darker color and tap it in there just to get a bit more of that natural shadow, like blending it together. So I'm just going to grab some darkness, especially towards the center of the tree. And I'm just going to tap it in. See how it kind of bleeds into it while it's still wet. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Trees aren't like perfect. So we do want to fill it in and just kind of make it a little bit more full towards the center. But these ones, all these branches are still like kind of like pointing up. And we're going to do another detailed one, which I typically do, like my go-to evergreen tree, where the branches are more pointed down. It's like the same kind of thing as this, but they're just pointed down. Grab me a little bit of that darkness. Okay, and then again, this will probably be the, the last-ish one. If there's any tree enthusiasts out there that want to kind of give us an idea of what <laughs> tree this looks like or any of these types look like, let us know because I don't know. And then I'm going to do some short ones kind of coming down the front to kind of just fluff it out a little bit so it doesn't look so odd. Again, let's just grab some of that darkness and just kind of tap it in there. 
I especially want to get it towards the center. We're just tapping it in because it should still be wet like that. And then for this one, I'm not going to do a trunk, I don't think. I'm just going to wash off my brush and just gently touch it like that. Like that. Okay, so there is our, I feel like it could still be, maybe I'll just fill it in the center a bit more. Can you even add a little bit of brown to our dark green and just kind of make it a little bit fuller towards the center? Okay, so there's our second tree. Now we are gonna do another one just like this, but they're gonna be pointing down a bit more. So let's grab our, let's grab sap green. I'm just like playing with all the greens. And I'm just gonna do a little thing here, little stem. And again, we're starting with the pine needles at the top pointing towards, like they're pointing upwards. I feel like I gotta have these blend out a bit better. It's okay. Okay, and then they're slowly gonna start to go downwards. Okay, and they're gonna have a more of a, a flicking out. So we had a curve going up and now we're gonna have it kind of going down. So I'll just show you kind of the shapes like this. And then again, you're gonna have some coming down the front. So see how these are pointing downwards like this. We're just using really light pressure and like this flicking motion with our, our wrist. And you use the lightest amount of pressure to get those really thin lines. So see how those ones go up, these ones go down. Similar technique, just different direction. And it makes it look like it's a different kind of tree. <laughs> I love painting trees. I think I already mentioned that, but I do. I really do. Okay, these are starting to dry up here, so I kind of just want to add a little bit of, I'm going to grab some more brown, a little bit of the darker green. I just want, nope, a bit more green. Because I just want to add some darkness in here, again, doing the same kind of thing. can't remember what color green I was using. That's okay. We're just mixing them all. And anytime you see me dip my brush back in my water, I'm just trying to, because I'm using such a small brush, I'm just trying to get a bit more water on it so when I go back in with the darker color, there's it's still wet. I tend to add more water on my brush when I'm using 
a smaller brush just because it doesn't hold as much, right? So every time I do these little branches, I'm using up a lot of that water. And so I really want to make sure that my brush and my paint is still wet so I can get those blending kind of effects when I add in the darker color. Because if I were to drop this in and it's dry, it wouldn't blend into the branches like the way I wanted it to. Okay. And I'm just going forward again. I'm just grabbing some of that darkness. Like so. Just fix a little couple areas if I wanted to. Okay. There's that. And then I'm just going to wash off my brush and just touch it just to get that little bit of a bleed. Okay. So there we have four already, and then we just have one more that we're going to try. Um, <clears throat> okay, and it's going to be kind of a bit more like this, but it's going to be fuller and touch the ground. So I'm going to grab some sap green, a lighter wash, just so watering it down. I'm going to start here with my trunk. And again, we are just... We're going to have it kind of flopping downwards. So again, brush is on an angle like so. Actually, I want a little bit of brown in there. I don't want it so bright. Okay. And then you're just kind of dabbing and I want it to be a bit more asymmetrical. Okay. You don't want it to be the same on both sides. You can even leave a little bit of the trunk exposed okay so it's kind of like this but it's just a little bit fuller I'm just making it a little bit thinner as we get closer to the edges of the branches, like smaller little thinner dots, like that. Okay, and then I think I might, let's do like this olivey green, I'm going to make it more oops, lighter on one side. Actually, I don't know, I think I want to add a little bit of blue to it, why not? Make it kind of like a turquoisey green. Just add a little bit of blue maybe to this side. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit more darkness. Let's add a little bit of that darker green in there. especially towards the center. I like it. And we can just grab a little bit of brown for the trunk. throw a little bit of brown throughout if you like. Wash off our brush, dry it a little bit, just have it blended out like so. Oops, I dropped some water there. <laughs> it's all good. I lost some of the brown in the trunk there. Again, just grab a bit more. that I feel like there could be a bit more darkness I love shadows so I'm just gonna grab a little bit more 
darker green, just kind of place it underneath all of these little bits that are coming out on the bottom side of it all. Like that. And right in the center here. I swear I could just paint pages and pages of trees. <laughs> Okay. And then just looking at this, like I'm wondering if we did a little bit more detail to it. I don't know. I feel like what if, what if I just took my kind of damp dryish brush and just kind of dabbed it in there and just went side to side. So it breaks up the bristles a bit and it just adds a little bit more texture to it. Just playing. I have no idea if this is working or not, but I kind of like it. Just adds a little bit more of the darker lines. There. I feel like I could just keep going and playing around with more trees. Let me know if you want another <laughs> round of trees here, but I think that's pretty good for now. Um, is this still what? Like, I feel like we could just add, keep adding and adding and adding just to make it look more detailed and I don't know. Break it up a bit. So many techniques you could use. This is like dry brush. Just breaking up the brittle brittles, bristles. Kind of kind of like that. That's cool. Anyway, okay, I think that's where we're gonna stop. But there you go. There are five different ways to paint evergreen trees. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a wonderful day. Bye guys.